Now, I was tempted this evening to give out a few carols. Now, you must be thinking, well, why on earth would he do that? It's the 7th of January. And yes, whilst I know I was greeted with a Merry Christmas earlier on, there is another reason. And it's because we're going to just look at the story of Simeon. Now, Simeon was a man that lived in Jerusalem and was in the vicinity of the temple when Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus arrived. Now, we often at Christmas time think about the shepherds that were compelled by the angels to come to the, uh, the place where the Lord Jesus uh, had been wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And how that they came and they praised God and they went away from that scene telling everybody about the things that they had seen. And we think too about the visit of the wise men. How that they had seen a star in the east and they came following it and eventually via Herod's uh, palace came to Bethlehem and to the house where the young child was. And they came worshipping him, presenting him with gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. But I think sitting in between those two visits, there is the story of Simeon and actually of Anna, two people that were at the temple during the visit of the Lord Jesus. I think the sequence of the, time, the timeline is, is the shepherds, then the visit of the family to Jerusalem some 40 days later, and then some weeks, maybe months later, the wise men came to Bethlehem. So I would have been quite justified perhaps in extending the carols uh, into this time, but we didn't. In thinking about Simeon, what we do is just to, we, we reflect upon this man and what he thought about the Lord Jesus. Now yes, the Lord Jesus at this time was just 40 days old. And we come this evening to consider the Lord Jesus who lived a life right up into adulthood and at the age of about 33 years old died and was buried and was resurrected and has now ascended into heaven. And we're looking back at the life of the Lord Jesus. Simeon was almost looking forward to the life of the Lord Jesus. And yet I'm hoping that what he saw in the Lord, we also will see. For he was greatly blessed in his meeting with the Saviour. And we can be assured of this. If for the first time we are considering Christ, and our minds are open as to who he really is and the implications that has for us, and we come and trust in him, then we too will be blessed. It may be that you've already believed, that you've already said that he is both Saviour and Lord to me. Well, nonetheless, you will be blessed by considering again, considering again the Lord's Christ. So I'm just going to read that passage, that story, and it's found in Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to read from verse 25. Luke chapter 2 and verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And it came by the Spirit, and he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. 
And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which are spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And we know the Lord will bless his precious words. I just want to think about three things concerning uh, this meeting uh, of Simeon and that young family. We're going to think about Simeon's righteousness and his revelation, what God said to him, but also then the recognition that came that he had uh, of the person of the Lord Jesus. First of all, his righteousness. We read there in verse 25 that Simeon was just and devout. Uh, before we look at what kind of character, character Simeon was, just think of his name. Simeon. It means hearing. Evidently, Simeon was a person who had heard the voice of God and responded. Now, you're here this afternoon. Or you may be listening in online. And through the word of God, the Bible, maybe through the preaching of the word of God, maybe in past weeks or even today, you will hear the voice of God. Calling out to you. Telling you something about yourself maybe that you didn't know. Showing you that you must come to Jesus Christ and trust him as saviour. Make him your Lord. Maybe it is that he's calling you to a closer, more intimate relationship with him. You hear the voice of God. But you have a choice. You can ignore that voice. You can pretend you never heard it. You can walk away. And you can just carry on. Now, it's the new year. And as we said earlier, it is a time so often for new opportunities, new changes. Well, there'll be no change like this one if you trust in Christ the Saviour today. His name means hearing. He heard the voice of God, responded to it, and trusted in God. For he's, descri he's described as being just and devout. He's just, he's righteous. Now, I just want to make it absolutely clear. He wasn't righteous because he was better than anybody else. He wasn't righteous because he sinned less than anybody else. He was righteous because he'd heard the voice of God and he trusted. He would believed. And God made him righteous in his sight. And God is willing to do exactly the same to all of us. For we, just like Simeon, are sinners. We're in need of responding to God's call. We're in need of trusting in Jesus Christ, trusting in God, following him. And if we do believe, then God will make us righteous. That's a question for the start of the year. Have I believed? Do I trust in God? Have I heard his voice? Have I responded? Am I righteous? because I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. He was righteous and devout. You see, here was a man that knew who God is. Having heard God's voice, having trusted in God, he realized that the God of heaven was one to be revered, one to be honored and worshipped, Want to be obeyed? He believed so deeply in God that he followed him reverently. We'd be very wrong in our thinking if we can just do with God as we wish. We need to trust in him. We need to understand that he is, he is the mighty God of all creation. We have all that we have because of his blessing. And we ought to be fully dependent upon him. Recognize that he is all in all. And Simeon had that. 
But we read of him that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's, that's not an easy phrase to understand. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. This is what it means. He was waiting for the comforter of Israel. He was waiting for the comfort, the solace, the encouragement of Israel. What he was really waiting for is the fulfillment of God's promise. You see, in the years before, the centuries before, God has spoken through various ways, through prophets, and he had revealed that there was one to come, the Messiah, the Christ that was going to bring the answer to all their needs, both individually and nationally. He was going to bring peace, for he was the Prince of Peace, the prophet said. And this, unknown to Simeon at the moment, was the one that was called Jesus. But he was waiting. He was waiting because God had promised him that those promises would be fulfilled. And in waiting, he was also searching. Well, he had come to the temple that day because the Spirit of God had revealed to him that this was the day that he would see the Lord's Christ. This is the revelation that was given to him. It was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. You see, here was a man that so trusted in God that he heard the voice of God and he was moved by the Spirit of God. It may well be that this afternoon you too are being spoken to by God and moved by the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God, one of his roles is to convict us of our sin. Is it that you know that you need a Savior because of your sin? Now, your sin is, is not just the most awful things that people could do. Our sin is disobedience to God. Our sin is rejecting him, rejecting the Savior. Our sin is those little things that we do that we casually dismiss as it's not so bad. The Spirit of God may be speaking to us. It spoke to Simeon and brought him to the temple. And the Holy Spirit told him that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Simeon was in a truly privileged position. He knew he would not die until he saw the promised Messiah. For hundreds of years, the faithful had waited for the fulfillment of those promises. And Simeon had been told that he was amongst those that would see the Christ with his own eyes. That he would not die until he saw the Messiah, the Christ. We're all going to see the Lord Jesus. Every one of us, with our eyes. But what will be the context when we see him? Will it be in life or in death? Will it be a saviour or as judge? It is better to see, to understand, to know the Lord Jesus in life. Now, we won't see him physically in life. But it is possible to see him in belief in life. To read concerning him, that's a good starting point. To take up a Bible and read the Gospels for yourself, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, to come to an understanding of what he said and what he did and what he claimed concerning himself. Don't just listen to the preacher. Read it for yourself. See for yourself. Believe for yourself. It is better to see and know him in life, to trust in him in life, than to meet him first in death. For the Bible tells us that it is appointed 
and to us wants to die and after death the judgment and the bible in the final book of the bible the book of the revelation it tells us how that the lord jesus sits upon a great white throne and he will judge all that have refused him chosen to ignore him chosen not to see him in life better to see him in life his righteousness simeon's revelation concerning the lord jesus but then the recognition that came with that meeting he recognized that the babe that was brought was the messiah because god told him he was he came by the spirit into the temple and he took the child jesus up in his arms and blessed god what, a, what an amazing opportunity for this man. You don't know how old he was. I suppose his preparedness to die that he speaks of in a moment's time um, is, shows us that, well, he'd lived long enough for now he had seen the Christ. But he took that baby, 40 days old, in his arms, lifted him up and blessed God. I just think of him holding that child cradling him that precious one and think of others that took hold of the lord jesus we read 33 years later of events when the son of man was betrayed into the hands of sinners the lord jesus spoke these words as guards came from the temple to arrest him as he prayed in the garden of gethsemane and we le read later that the guards laid hands on jesus and took him they wouldn't have handled him as simeon did three days after the crucifixion of the lord jesus an angel stands at an open tomb an empty tomb for the lord jesus had risen and the angel explains to the visitors to the tomb that the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men the lord jesus was taken by the jews and he was taken by the romans and he was abused by them he was put upon a cross his hands nailed to it, his feet nailed to it. He having already borne the, the lash uh, of the Roman whip, he also having been beaten and spat upon, a crown of thorns thrust upon his brow, handled by the hands of wicked men. And Peter, one of the disciples, just a few weeks later was preaching at Pentecost in Jerusalem. And he said that the Lord Jesus, him being delivered, he have taken and by, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. But Peter was able to also testify that he was risen again. How do you handle the Lord Jesus? Of course, we, we can't touch him, physically touch him. John did. John, in writing one of his letters, he opens it with these words concerning the Lord Jesus, which we have heard, with, uh, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. John was there, you know, at the cross when the nails were removed. He, with a few other believers, bold enough to carry the body of the Lord Jesus to the tomb. John did handle the Lord Jesus, but we have to handle him in the sense of what will we do with him? Will we believe? Will we trust him? Our time is gone, but I just want to close with this. Simeon said, let thy servant depart in peace. Do you know, in knowing Christ, he knew he was ready to die. And was willing to die. Death is something that we look towards fearfully sometimes. Something we know we'd 
have, that we have to face but would rather avoid. It's something of grave concern for us. But actually we can enter into it in peace. If in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is my Saviour, that we have entrusted in him, we can say with Paul the Apostle, for to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. It's better to be with him. Simeon said he was happy to die because mine eyes have seen thy salvation. He knew that he was saved, not because of religion, not because of following rules, not because of the good things he had done, but because he trusted in a person, Jesus Christ, God's salvation. Have you trusted in him? Is he your salvation? Shall we pray?